So I guess, first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Juliana Bustillo, second year paper at MFA. Um, originally from LA, I grew up in Boyle Heights in East LA, which is the landscape that I use as a main source of information. And basically, um, my thesis show is up right now at the Anderson, and it's titled Childhood Reliquary de una Catracha Mexi entre Nopales, and it is a multi-sensory based installation consisting of three large and six medium scale mixed media paintings with a performance. It is informed by my upbringing in Boyle Heights and the projects during the 90s, followed by East LA in the mid 2000s. It is the reliquary for my discomfort in institutional spaces and why I have found comfort in dystopian-like installations. This is the landscape in which I exist. Regardless of where I am now, it is where I place my work. It is the context in which I celebrate the powerful delicacy of brown femininity. And going off of that, I guess like, I'm gonna be mainly focusing on the preparations that I had for the thesis itself. And in order to do that right now, I'm just gonna show a couple of slides. And in those slides, it's gonna show the work that's currently up at the Anderson. And um, it's gonna showing the work in progress, showing the work in like different various installation strategies that I was um, experimenting throughout my time here at VCU. And alongside the slideshow, I'm going to be playing the loop and I hope it works. So my installation has a loop playing, two loops, one of them, it's all found noise, um, sounds. And in the same way I collage imagery and like painting techniques within like the actual paintings, I think of these, the, the noises that are coming there as like collages themselves that end up expanding hopefully like the reading or like the knowledge and like also like, especially for me, like really setting the vibe of like the headspace that I want my viewer and myself to be in as they're experiencing this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play the loop and I'll play a couple of slides. And then after that, I'll kind of get down and break down um, a little bit of what was going on in thesis. So I'm gonna go ahead and play now. And if anyone can let me know if you can't hear it, um, that would be great. But... <laughs>
And I guess with that, um, so that's the loop and you guys saw a little bit of a video that I had worked on. And along with the installation, I do do a performance in which I'm reciting a poem by a Honduran poet, Amanda Castro, which is titled Venga Mañana. And in that poem, she very eloquently and beautifully um, gives me a time lapse, a timeline of um, pre-colonial, colonial and post-colonial history of Honduras through like a feminine lens, which I also find really important in my work because I think a lot of it is about um, kind of like honoring um, the homemakers that I've known, like people, people who aren't just like cis femmes, but people who are, who embody femininity and use that as a, as a force, as a weapon and as a weapon to, um, ensure that um, communities thrive and continue to do so. And I think another thing that I really love that kind of started happening with the um, calendar series is that I started seeing how um, how the like capitalist uh, celebrations can be can be redistributed to the community and like like repackaged and like recelebrated. So I really like for example, like in East LA, like 4th of July is not 4th of July, like the block gets like lit as fuck. And it's really all about just like coming together. And, um, and it's really beautiful to like aesthetically, it's always something that I've always loved. And then also like always remembering that um, as a kid, uh, especially people who grow up in inner cities, you're constantly being bombarded. And like, you're constantly being um, like being put in a put in situations where you like wake up and you're hearing noises all the time you're like seeing so many things all at once and it like honestly sometimes becomes too much but I don't like to think of my installations as a, a moment of healing it's more like a moment of like reclaiming all of these noises and all of these things and kind of like finding the beauty in it you know kind of like you can have all of these notes but um, it's in the way that you pay, 
you play them together that ends up kind of like creating like a new sound so that's something I think about a lot and these are just like install shots of like my final um review last semester which was I guess like here you can really see that I'm starting to experiment and I'm really like getting ready to like for like thesis and then this is like some imagery like some carnicerias that I find back home in East LA and like here is kind of like the earlier versions of the Virgen de Guadalupe. And then this is like for um, installation shots as well. And then I think here with my last semester, uh, a, a, me, a thing I was really excited about was like the inclusion of this tarp. And this inclusion of this tarp as being like, a material that can like hold and also like create rooms and like I've seen this tarp being used in like many many ways many places because I think like another vibe that I'm really going for like something I'm constantly thinking about is like yes the inherited images that I have but also like the DIY culture that I've chosen to be a part of so it's like the DIY with like the raspachismo comes in when like the installation is all in at once, especially like with the performance. And I think like this tarp, I took this tarp and like I had a lot of help um, in cutting this up and making it happen. So I'm thinking of also like, yes, this tarp as like a fence, but also as a net. And then also like how that begins to emulate like other image, like other um, things in my other paintings, like right here that like this fence that you see right here is all cut out of paper. And I'm starting to think of like how like, like the drawn fence, the constructed fence, the painted fence, the fence that's negating the fence that's like showing everything that's in between. And also like the fence also is like a form of protection. And then within these calendars, obviously there's like numbers, but those numbers are never sequential. Those numbers are never like leading to anything. Um, I kind of played around with them. Um, a lot of them, which have like months where my immediate family has birthdays on, like those are marked off. And then that's kind of like more of the installation process. And this is kind of like to show you all the textures and like kind of where the colors come from and what I'm thinking about, what I'm looking at. And then I think like the biggest thing that happened to me, especially with this last painting that I did is I realized that I really love tape. And instead of just my canvases, I just sew them with tape and tape has been kind of like this medium that these two years I really like fell in love with and I kind of like honed in on. So this is like the beginning of the larger painting, which I feel like is the culmination of like my two years here at VCU. I call it like the centerpiece. And this is like the imagery that you see that um, comes in through the back of the fence. Like it's not a reflection. It's like actually like seen through the city. Here you see like the actual um, storefront that's here. Um, it was really nice to finally bring in some like signage into my paintings, like a little bit more um, like on purpose because um, during my time here, I've also like painted a mural and I've also like painted a sign for a barbershop and that in itself taught me a lot in like movement and dexterity. And it's something that I really love that I'm able to like go outside and like bring those skills into the studio. And then this is the poem by Amanda Lisa Castro. I won't read it, <laughs> but I think it's a really beautiful poem. Um, and I think she just, like I said, she just like gives me a timeline and she gives me a history of Honduras that my mom's from Honduras. So um, I think like, I really love the idea of having this conversation with like me, my upbringing with my mom, but also like having this poet come in and like really kind of like, give me the story that my mom can tell me. So then I have like, I feel like both of those are valuable in allowing me to see like the full picture. And then, um, so this is getting closer to thesis. And this is like the tarp fully, not fully installed, but like the beginning of the installation process of it within the um, sponge room at the Anderson. And um, let's see. So then, okay. So then like I said, throughout my time here, 
at VCU, I was like not just installing in current rooms, but also using my studio as a space of like finding out installation strategies. So here you see like the work kind of sort of installed in my studio. And then here you see like, oh my gosh, okay. The work in my studio, and that this is the work at the thesis. So this is an install shot of the thesis. And basically the format of it that I was thinking of was kind of like, the backyard has always been also like central to my practice and central to like my research. And also I wanted to use like, um, kind of like a party setting, you know, like in the middle is the main table. On the side, you have like your other family tables. And then I see the um, calendars themselves as functioning as like figures within the space and also like the party favors, the things you take away with you. And then, um, this one is titled Desde Honduras con Mucho Amor. It has Christmas lights, uh, velas, tape, canvas, Sharpie, color pencil, acrylic, and charcoal. It's this thing that hangs inside the Honduran restaurant. The picture of the first encounter with immigration, the beginning of my in-between. And with this one, this will be like the one painting I break down to kind of like give you an idea of how it's more like my research feels the painting instead of like the painting is about the research. So um, here is like the main three images that I use to create uh, to create this painting. So um, I can go through them pretty quickly. Like this thing is literally a thing that hangs inside a Honduran restaurant that I, I frequent with my mom back in LA specifically in Huntington Park. And it's always been, for me, this restaurant has always been the, the place in which me and my mom sit down and over food, she like gets to actually have the opportunity to like educate me and like tell me more about like the motherland. And then um, the picture here in the middle is actually a picture of like, I, it's her first encounter, but I say it's our first encounter because I'm in the picture too. But it's um, her first encounter with immigration, like turning herself in at the gate and asking for asylum. And in doing that is um, really how we got to LA because through that she just got like a Greyhound, they gave her a Greyhound ticket and she was just like, I'll go to LA. And that is like the story of how I got to LA. And then here you'll see like, the Winverwood projects, Winverwood projects from um, Boyle Heights, which are the projects that I grew up in. Um, they're not this color anymore, they're gray, but when I lived there, they were this color. And kind of like using those aesthetics to like collage and like create this one thing is a lot of the times like how I'm thinking and how I construct images. And then um, this one is called Entierenme Mi Tierra Porpis. And this one has Christmas lights. Velas, mantel, mantel, tape, canvas, sharpie, and acrylic. And this is the mama and her child. And it's also Popo, Tecatepel, and Ista Chicual, which is like an um, Aztec story of like the two volcanoes in Mexico. Um, this is kind of like also being from East Alamo Heights can be a little like homogenized in the way where I'm saying like East LA is predominantly Mexican American. It has a really rich Chicano history, which I am really proud of and I really am invested in as well. But, but um, also having a mom who is from Central America, I always did find, um, find it really hard or like found that accessibility to that part like, like less available to me because of where I was at. So I just thought of like how delicately it would be to like cover up that image of Popocatepel holding East, East Akshual. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like really bad at pronouncing everything. But like juxtaposing the image of my Honduran, my Central American mother holding me over like the, the Aztec story, which I think like kind of talks about the way that I, I have found um, like femininity to be resistant, resistant. And then this one is titled, Virgencita que en todas partes te veo. 
and this one has Christmas lights, velas, mantel, flores, fake flowers, an empty 40 for the homies, Sharpie tape and acrylic. And this one is, um, I see you everywhere, not as an apparition, but on liquor stores, front yards, carnicerias, murals, you are East Los. I think for me, like my personal relationship with the image of the Virgencita has always been the image of like East Los. It's like an image, like I said, you see outside liquor stores, you see outside carnicerias, but you also encounter them in a lot of people's front yards, which is like the beginning of like the makeshift altar, right? And like the makeshift altar more specifically like talking about like Rascuachismo aesthetics. And then um, this one is called La Nueva. This one has Christmas lights, velas, the stickers, an old bed sheet, Xerox copies of fake flowers. And um, she's new as in the beginning of exploring materials as painting mediums. And I say that because with this one, um, I'm invested in like after all of this to like continue practicing and like continue pushing materials because I am predominantly, I do think of myself as a painter, but I am also invested in finding other ways that I can use painting language to like use other materials, but use them as a painter and how I can create an image, create a painting with things that aren't like a painting medium. And this one is titled Muffle. This one has Christmas lights, cobija, mantel de plástico, velas, effects pedals, headphones, amps, canvas, oil, acrylic Sharpie tape, color pencil, charcoal, and nails. And this one is um, about the muffle of my voice and prayer and noise. Muffled like brown noise, muffling like 90s anti-immigration laws. And before thesis, like this was the painting in which I would actually do my performances in front of. And for me, um, it kind of became like, it was also like one of the first paintings of this series that I completed. So it kind of had like a little special place in my heart, which was also why I gravitated so much towards it. And in the beginning when I would do my um, performances, it would be in front of this painting. And this one is titled, It Is My Backyard. This one has Christmas lights, paper, tape, color pencil, charcoal, oil, acrylic, and Sharpie. Um, it rained one day, a banana tree fell over, and my stepdad put a, a ladder under it. And the title for this one, It Is My Backyard, is kind of like the thing that catapulted my whole research and like specifically like with like my upbringing and like institutional spaces from like early childhood education and the loop that I just played where you're hearing the woman say like some hello racist things that's from uh, an ex like that's a clip from a documentary film from 1997 called Fear and Loathing at Hoover Elementary and it was by a teacher who was currently working at Hoover Elementary and this was during proposition is it 188 or 187? But that one passed in 1997. And what that one did, it, it um, basically, re it basically removed the right for um, immigrant children to receive schooling and healthcare. When in reality, what like it actually did is like, yes, it, um, it did, it did pass and they were, um, excluded from receiving education, but also what was happening during this time too, is that a lot of children just for being brown were now being categorized and now being treated as like less than. So the 90s also was like a lot of like um, policies that were being passed, like the policy that I remember specifically affecting me that goes back to this title is when I was in third grade, I was integrated in an all English classroom. My first language, even though I am an American citizen is Spanish. I learned English at school. Um, before then uh, I received my education from pre-K to second grade bilingual. I was learning everything in um, Spanish and English at the same time, but in 1997, a policy 227 was passed by California voters. And this one basically made it illegal for you to speak Spanish. Like you can no longer speak Spanish 
at school. So it got rid of, I felt a huge shift in my education. Like I said, it was my first time being in an all English classroom. I was hella excited. They gave us the manila folder and in it, I drew an island and I wanted to show off my English writing skills. So I wrote, it is an island, but I used the Spanish, exclam the Spanish exclamation. So all the kids were saying like, it reads, it is an island. So I think like that thought, that sentiment just kind of like catapulted, honestly, the research that is going on right now. So like whenever you see me titling something like it is my backyard, that's like what I'm referencing is that moment, that shift, that like the beginning of like a fractured existence or like the beginning of like an in-between. And then this one is called Feliz Cumpleaños a Ti. It has Christmas lights, velas, my bike, tape, oil, acrylic, color, pencil, and Sharpie. And this one is about um, after the party, I hope I don't lose you. As in, after the party, I hope I don't lose who I came with. Um, after the party, I hope I don't lose my bike. <laughs> um, and also, I think now that I'm talking about this bike, the installation for me, like the installation strategies and like the props that I use for my paintings have never been about like the failure of painting. It has always been about the limitations of painting, which I like actually love and enjoy. And I use that as a way of like expanding my practice and like, how can I, how can I then use an object to expand the reading or expand or like maybe like, um, help understand or like help guide the viewership of the painting. And then um, this one is called East Los is Lit. Um, like you see right there, this one is mixed media as well. Acrylic tape, um, oil, uh, Xerox copies. This one is about the experience of what does it mean to have a lot of fireworks lighting up the sky, but also with this one, um, I did talk a lot about the Virgencita, but this patron right here that you see here is um, Suyapa. She's the patron of Honduras. And um, for my thesis show, I really wanted to be able to have like the Suyapa make an appearance and also like have her exist um, side to side with the Virgencita. And then these are just like more installation shots um more installation shots of my thesis show and then back here you can see like the smaller painting is kind of hidden back there I really um enjoyed my time there my time like constructing the space and creating like this like vibe this installation for everyone and then here is just kind of like a screenshot of the performance that I did alongside Jesus Gomez who backed me up on the pedals and this that you see right here is a pedal board that was commissioned by me. And this was made by first year paper MFA student, Clara Leonor Cruz. Um, and I think uh, what was really nice about this room and this like base right here is like, it really gave me like a stage and a stage in which I can kind of be in the background. So that was like a really amazing, important moment for me. And also as far as the performance goes, when I'm doing the performance, I'm thinking about like waking up on Sunday and hearing the Cholo dude that like recently turned to Christianity and like is repenting for all of his sins. And he's like on the megaphone, just yelling about how Jesus is on his way and coming. And I'm also referencing like all the crazy ladies from the block that go up and down in prayer. And um, those are always people that now I always think of them as like anti-capitalist heroes because they're just like not, they're not like me. They're not, they, 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 took a, they took a chance and they're just like out here not, not contributing, which is great. And then that's another install shot that I really enjoy to kind of see like how the material behind the painting kind of like reveals or, um, makes the like bring something out of the painting itself 
And what, what's been really nice about this too is seeing how the change of light or like how the natural light affects the read on the room. Personally, for me, I think like the best time or like the best time of day to go into this room would be like sundown to really to see like the changes before you. And then that's like the other side of the install. And that's the bigger painting all completed. Um, and a couple of close-ups. And I think, I, don't know, I think I'm good.